Well, I'm kind of glad Greg mentioned that this is a Bible study, the way we count it, and so you could uh, ask questions or make comments. But I wish you'd done it next Sunday, because uh, the passage we have today is uh, challenging, and it, uh, it makes us ask questions, and it's okay if you do. It's, uh, we're at the end of Hebrews chapter 5. Uh, we're glad all of you came this afternoon. I know we are infringing on your nap time, and in reality, it's supposed to be 2 o'clock, and a lot of you are lost and gone by 2 o'clock, so, <laughs> so it's, uh, we're at the end of chapter 5. Uh, if you remember, Jesus has been talking, or not, the writer's been talking about Jesus, and how he's the high priest, and how he learned obedience by those things which he suffered. And because of that, he was made perfect. And because of that, God made him to be, as many of your translations read, the author of eternal salvation, or the source of eternal salvation. Now, in verse 11, the writer of the book of Hebrews, for the first time, really kind of bears in on the people to whom he's writing. Up until this time, it's all been about how Jesus is greater than uh, anyone. Uh, Angels, uh, Melchizedek, uh, whoever you want to talk about. But now he says something very different. We have much to say about this, about Jesus and about salvation, about uh, those kind of things. He's what he's been talking about. But it's hard to explain to you because you are slow to learn. Uh, or does another translation say something different? You're dull of hearing. You no longer try to understand, which may be a really good translation of it. Don't seem to listen. Uh, so we have a lot of things we need to tell you that we're, we've laid the foundation here. We've talked about Jesus in a lot of ways. We've got a lot of things we'd like to tell you But it's hard, and it's hard because you are slow to learn, or you just don't want to listen, or... Ronnie, how did yours put it? No longer try to understand. No longer try to understand. In fact, by this time, you ought to be, everybody remembers, teachers. By this time, you ought to be to a point in your Christian walk in your life, you ought to be a teacher. And you need someone to teach in, in fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. You need to hear this all over again. Well, that, that kind of bothers me because I am one who believes that you have to hear all of it all over again rather frequently. And I think repetition is extremely important because we kind of finally let it soak in by repeti- repetition. You ought to be teaching it, but now you have someone who needs to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. You need milk, not not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, still being an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Well, that's, that's a pretty interesting statement, don't you think? Uh, that that you're, you're, you're really infants. As, as I write all these words, I've spent all this time, now I'm finally here to the end of chapter 5, and I'm telling you, you're, you're acting like infants. You are indeed infants, spiritually. And it, it's been enough time, apparently, that they ought not to be infants, they ought to be more what? Mature. And what is the attention span of an infant? <laughs> it's, it's not very long. <laughs> Ron, Ron, the answer is it's just not very long, okay? <laughs> and, and how quickly does their attention jump from one thing to another? 
it's quick. Ron, don't answer. It's quick. Okay. <laughs> so, so you you ought you ought to be mature, and yet you're acting like these children in regard to God's word, and you have need to be taught again, even the most basic of things. Now, you and I may be there some. You you and I may be in that, but hopefully we're not. Hopefully everybody's working toward maturity. Chapter 6 is where it gets even more interesting to me. Remember, the people are slow of hearing, dull of hearing, they don't want to know, uh, whatever. Therefore, since you're in this situation, let us leave the elementary teachings about... Let's just stop there. What, what are elementary teachings? All right. Not, not, okay, we, we say basics. Uh, if I put it in the context of our school system, when at least I was in school, what did they call the grade schools? They were what kind of schools? Elementary schools. They're elementary. We still use that term today. Well, what did I learn in grade school? I, that's exactly right. I learned ABCs. And what did I learn in math? I had to learn to add and subtract and finally multiply and then divide. And then I had to start at some point along the way working with fractions. And, and, and even before that, in grade school, in the fourth grade, Mrs. Olson would set me in a chair right in front of her, and she would do those flashcard things with multiplication what? Tables? Uh, but you know what? But by the time I got to be on up there a ways in school, I, I, was, I was doing more things with algebra and, and, and a lot of trigonometry and geometry. And, I mean, what happened to me? I, mean, I, I could do that pretty well, actually. I got off the milk. That's right. I, I, somehow, I went through enough steps along the way that now I'm over here on one end, and I know a lot of this, and over here on this end, I'm just barely adding and subtracting. And that's kind of the way it is in this Christian life. But you don't want to stay in grade school way too long. I mean, that, that, that wouldn't work so well, would it? If I'm five foot tall and they're two and a half foot tall? If I'm having to shave and they're not? I mean, that doesn't work well if I stay in grade school all along. <laughs> Happiest 13 years of Ron's life, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So let us leave behind the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity. Maturity. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death. We understand that, don't we? Repentance is always from wrong to right. And of faith in God, that's pretty simple, isn't it? My translation says instructions about baptisms. What, does anybody have something different than that? Cleansing oh, that's interesting. Yours says cleansing rites. I was confused by all that. I wondered about it. I've always wondered about it. But the word for baptism right there is not the same word that we find other places. It's often switched around to the word immersion in the New International Version or other modern speech versions that we call them. A lot of times instead of a baptism, they use the word immersion, which in one part of that word or one use of that word, it does mean that. But this word means more like washings. Washings. Now, I don't know if it's right or not, but, but I am told as I read things that there were many different washings, especially among the Jews. There were ceremonial washings. And, and the priest had to wash himself at certain times, certain ways, certain events. I am also told from history that when the Jews would proselyte someone, what does that mean? 
get them to convert to Judaism, that they would baptize them or wash them. That was a sign of their conversion back or conversion to Judaism. And now we have a baptism that is introduced by Christ. They were well familiar in that day with the idea of baptism. So maybe that's why they use the phrase instructions about baptisms or washings. But that all still falls under the category of being what? Elementary. The beginning. So it's teaching about Christ. It's laying a, on, laying, not laying again the foundation of repentance. It's faith in God. It's instructions in baptism. The laying on of hands is an elementary teaching, he says. Well, do we even know what that means? Do we? I mean, there was a practice in that day and time of laying on of hands, was there not? We're going to find in the book of James that, that when someone's sick, there is anointing with oil. There's a, there's a kind of a laying on of hands thing. And when the apostles sometimes would do a, a miracle, as would Jesus, what would they do? Lay on their hands. And when, when Paul was being sent off to a, a new work and leaving a place like Ephesus or whatever, they would often gather around him I guess to pray for him too, but they would, they would do what? Lay their hands on him. Uh, I, I, there have been several congregations I've spoken in, or maybe I've done a, a weekend seminar or, or something like that, and, and several of them had me to come and, and stand in the center, and the leaders and maybe some others would come and put their hand over on me as they would say a prayer, as they would send me off. That's happened numerous times uh, in various settings uh, within the churches of Christ. The resurrection of the dead. Uh, we, we teach the resurrection of the dead with the same force and frequency we would the crucifixion of Jesus, wouldn't we? Because it's all about being raised from the dead. And eternal judgment. Is eternal judgment an advanced course or an elementary course? Now, if, 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 I'm, I'm making that point kind of stressed on purpose because I suspect it makes you feel uncomfortable a bit like it does me. Does it? it, 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 it hey, it's time, he says, to leave behind the elementary things, it's time to leave these things that belong to infants, and it's time to go on maturity. And so I, I need for you to think about setting aside the elementary teachings and moving on. L like, like washings, baptisms, uh, like faith in God, uh, like the resurrection of the dead, like eternal judgment or eternity. I, we need to go beyond that. Those are basic things you learn at the very beginning of your walk with Christ. Is it not? Uh, it's almost the foundation for what we're going to learn later on. And we don't have to worry about those things changing. That's, that's exactly right. This is the foundation of everything. Now, I'm big on remembering your roots. I'm big on remembering the foundation. In fact, I will tell you that to this day, if I work an algebra problem and I write it down, I might can, in my mind, jump to the answer. But I go through several steps. Several steps. Why do you think I go through several steps? And I go through steps I can skip in my mind and go ahead and do it. Why do I go through those steps? Because Mrs. Walters taught my math from the 7th seventh, seventh grade, 8th grade, ninth grade. She taught me all the way through, except for one year. And Mrs. Walters, if she taught you math, she made absolutely sure you got the basics and you had them fundamentally down. 
And so she would make us go to the blackboard and work a problem, and then she would critique in front of the whole class every one. Of course, mine was always wonderful. Not, not quiet, but I, I learned from Mrs. Walters to follow the what? The steps. I wrote everything down. I still do. I write it down so, so I know my logic. So I'm not saying that these basics are to be forgotten. But do you realize how many people take hold of the basics and they go no farther? And they take hold of the basics and they think that's all they need to do. And it's always been a problem for Christianity. That I get the basics done and I'm home free. Now, if, if that's my attitude, what does my life end up looking like? Well, it looks no different, really, than how it looked when I walked into this place and learned about God and developed a faith and did have a baptism and did proclaim that I would begin the process of repentance. How many have done that kind of thing? But if I stop there and say, I'm in, and you are in. You are in the kingdom at that point. I'm in. It's almost like people say, it's good enough for me. I, I'm in, but I'm done. And yet the whole New Testament is trying to lead us to where? What we do after that, what we do to become what Jesus described as a Sermon on the Mount. And I've often said, and I'm sure in error, that I think most of the letters in the New Testament are really commentaries on the Sermon on the Mount. Almost everything that's there was first spoken by Jesus. I think they, they have commentaries about what He said. But the point is, why in the world? If I'm right at what, what I said this morning, that the Gospels is where Jesus is, remember the word? Presented. And the book of Acts is sitting there, and it's so different from any other book in the New Testament. And I've been saying it's where Jesus is preached. And when we see Jesus preach, we see people responding to that preaching. But now you have Romans, and all the way up to the next, up to Revelation, and, and I'll, put, I'll put Revelation in that category, but... but all those other books are written so that I might go, I think, to a state of, what's the word here? Maturity. I, everything else is written so that I might go from being the junior member, just, there's no such thing as a junior member, but just, just barely in, to go on to maturity. And, and, and that's why it's, there's so much there written like that. Does that make sense to you? So one last point, I've got to quit. When anything in this world doesn't grow, what typically happens to it? It, it ends up disappearing somehow. It dies. Maybe somebody cuts it down. Uh, but it's, it's, it's useless. Uh, I had a little calf one time, a little heifer calf that I thought was going to be the prize of everything. It looked perfect. But it looked perfect because it was a dwarf. And it never, never, never grew. This heifer never grew. It looked good in a little, but after a while it didn't look so good. And that's what happens to us. That, that's what happens to Christians all the time. Is they get the basics, and the basics are fundamental, they're important, and we need to remember the basics but they don't go beyond very far. They don't, they don't, they don't see the need. They don't, they don't feel the devotion. They don't feel the love. That, and, and we don't, or we just get busy. Satan gets in our way. And I just don't grow.
to, to get that figured out, though, took quite a while. And if we stop the growth, we end up somehow destroying everything. I mean, a, a wise old fellow I used to listen to used to ask this question all the time. He said, how tall will a tree, tree grow? How tall will a tree grow? And his answer always was, just as tall as he can. Given the soil, given the water, given the, everything around it, wherever he's planted, he'll grow just as tall as he possibly can. When we've been planted in the kingdom of Christ, we are to be growing how much? as much as is made possible for us. Isn't that interesting? I think that's what he's trying to get to in the book of Hebrews. Let's sing our final song.